Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, Game Geezer here. I just wanted to post another video on a question um, that I had got. It was about uh, PCI Express multipliers. So the question was, how important is PCI Express um, X16 versus X8? Um, this person was wondering because they uh, have a setup similar to mine, and they have a uh, multiplier of 16 on one GPU. But they were wondering if they go um, SLI with it, how much performance they might lose on two cards times eight versus just one at times 16. Now, I'm not going to show you a bunch of crazy benchmarks or anything like that, but I do have the answer to this question, and uh, I'm going to sum it up for you right now. Um, so, <clears throat> basically, if you got anything kind of modern now, any modern uh, motherboard, you're running PCI 3.0. And uh, I'm going to show you some stuff here. So if you can see here, um, PCI Express version 1, 2, 3. And you guys, I don't know if you're familiar, but 4.0 and 5.0 have already been developed. And basically, they've already, they've already got the ability to produce 4.0 and 5.0, but they're not going to. Um, mostly because they don't need any more... You don't, there's really no need to go past 3.0 yet. And um, they're also trying to, you know, hold off to make something to talk about in the future. So they do have the ability, if they wanted to, to jump ahead and start working on 5.0 and finish it. But they want to make us wait, launch 4.0 and then 5.0, which is kind of annoying. But anyway, so these are the um, Express versions here. Now... Back in the day with version 1 and 2, if you had taken like a 980 Ti versus uh, a 980 Ti and one was at a multiplier of 16 and one was at a multiplier of 8 and you were on PCI 1 or 2, there would have been um, a noticeable difference in frame rates. So um, for 1 and 2, uh, this would have been a big deal. But since we're currently on PCI Express 3.0, um, if you're testing on a PCI Express 3.0 board and you're testing like a 1080 Ti on a multiplier of 8 and then another one on the same system multiplied by 16, you're only going to lose between 1 and 4% of your performance on that. And there's plenty of benchmarks. You can go YouTube and they'll tell you the same thing. You're not going to lose hardly any frames at all. And the reason that is is because... If you take a 1080 Ti and you go check out the specs, they don't really talk about bandwidth, um, except for this number here, 484, and I don't know if that correlates with this, but um, this is a, for a 1080 Ti. They don't really talk about PCI bandwidth usage or anything like that, but um, basically what it comes down to is the bandwidth usage. Is uh, There's so much available that we don't need more quite exactly yet. So if you look at PCI Express 3.0, uh, at a times 8 multiplier is 8 gigabytes, basically. And then at a multiplier of 16, it basically, you know, doubles. So it goes to 16. And um, at some point between 8 and 16, uh, at least on a 1080 Ti, you hit a point where there's no real gain. So maybe let's say that the cap for the 1080 Ti is 10 gigabytes a second. So you could basically gather that from the tests that you see. So um, you're really not losing much going from a 16 multiplier down to an 8, at least with a 1080 Ti. Now maybe in a few months there will be some awesome new graphics card that um, you know, will trump this because the data that it's pushing the bandwidth is is really meant for a times 16 multiplier. But at the current time, um, with the 1080 Ti, the multiplier uh, set at 8 is almost identical results to a multiplier set at 16, and that's all because of bandwidth. And again, once the cards catch up, and it becomes the t to the point where um, uh, PCI Express 3 at times 8 doesn't cut it anymore, then they're going to give us 4. You know, so then they're going to give us 4, and then so on and so forth. So that's why they haven't released 4, uh, PCI Express 4.0 or 5.0, because there's really no need, because right now the 1080 Ti is like the king, 
and um, even if you have it set at times eight, it's going to run almost exactly the same as if you had it at times sixteen. Um, and this is, you know, for PCI Express three. Now, when we go down to two and one, it's a whole different story. But as you can see through the years, it's uh, basically it's just doubled. So um, times eight, you get two gigs per second, then four at 2.0, and then eight at 3.0, and then expected 16 at 4.0, and expected 24 to 32 ish on 5.0. So um, yeah, basically the reason that there's basically no difference at running a like a 1080 Ti or any kind of graphics card. Um, I'm just referring to an ATI because that's like the king right now. So, you know, if there's no difference with the king on a times 8 versus a times 16, then imagine if you have a weaker card, um, it's definitely not going to make a big deal because uh, like a 9 ATI or something, it's it's probably not going to be noticeable, uh, noticeable difference at all versus either one or the other because the bandwidth is being fully uh, supported, if that makes sense. Um, but I just want to show this graph and answer that question very quickly. So, um, yeah, as long as you're not on, as long as you're on PCI Express 3.0, um, there's not going to be a difference on your 8 versus 16 multiplier for your graphics cards. So if you're like me and you're on a 7700K, um, and you don't have enough lanes available to run both cards at 16, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it because times 8 is going to give you almost identical results as time 16. Is there a difference? Yes, if you're on if you're on a time 16, you will get maybe two more frames or something like that, but you know, like I said, percentage-wise, like between 1 and 4% and most of the results yielding only 1%, so not a big deal. Um so if you really wanted to go SLI for some reason, but you were worried about dropping from a 16 to two cards that are at times eight, don't worry about it. Um, it's it's not going to hurt you at all. You will just get your small gain from going SLI. And you know how SLI works. It just depends how the games are built. And uh, I've been seeing uh, that some of these new games that are being optimized for it are seeing almost exactly double the frame rate um, by adding a second card, which is awesome because that means that finally people who are making games are getting on board with the idea of multiple GPUs. And... Um, now we're actually get more uh, scaling benefit from that, so that's pretty nice. But um, anyways, guys, I just wanted to answer that question really quickly and kind of show you guys this graph and explain a little bit of that and um, just kind of walk you through that. Um, but uh, anyways, guys, hope that answered your question, and uh, have a good one.